clarify, Bill, are you at liberty at this point to say if if who would be starting on Sunday just because of the report that uh, Justin Fields is on the COVID list? Well, I can verify Justin Fields is on the COVID list. You probably didn't need that. Uh, I think we found out, I found out this morning. Um, I don't know, Adam, I, beyond that, I think we just say that uh, Andy and Nick are good to go. Expect them to practice full today. And, you know, welcome to, I guess, another year of this. 2022 like just like last year yeah well and and i asked you last week too do you, do you enjoy the challenge and it <laughs> here it's groundhog day here we go it's another week another quarterback right yeah another another week of um not having a qb wh whoever it ends up being uh taking every rep of practice for the week you know but i mean and obviously the last couple of weeks have shown i mean we've, we've started three different quarterbacks this year and we've got guys who can go in and, and win games. And, and I think, um, you know, th there's a great level of confidence with, with uh, Andy and Nick. So if, if what we're hearing is, is, and again, I don't, you know, t uh, before Christmas, when I went on uh, the COVID reserve list, if that's what they call it for coaches, <clears throat> I guess it was 10 days if you didn't test back in. So I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the de the details of the current, um, protocol are i really don't um i just know i'm on a pretty good holiday from having to test myself but yeah no we have great confidence in, in andy and nick so ho however it goes from here we'll, we'll be we'll be ready to go yeah, thank you jason leisure bill how would you explain to those of us that don't that aren't offensive coordinators for a living uh what it's like to go into the week with a plan and then have be told thursday it's gonna it's gonna be a totally different quarterback yeah. Um, we spend a lot of time uh, as we watch video and plan on Monday, usually afternoon and evening, uh, all, really all day Tuesday offensively We in various meetings. As we determine what to put in the plan, you, you try to figure out, okay, with this quarterback, we know just from what we've seen with our eyes in practice, this is, you know, he's really good at these. He really likes these. We know, Hey, here, this, you know, th there are so many passes you can run in a, as an example with a quarterback in, in a game, you know, that we've run throughout training camp, but, but you got to pick a certain number that you can legitimately practice and prepare. So there might be some that say, you know, that, that I, we think that's good against them, but I don't know that he's repped that a lot. So let's, let's keep that one out. Well, now when you, when you switch, to a new QB, you, you kind of have to have to uh, work fast, like we did uh, the last couple of weeks. W work fast um, and get their feedback. You know, so sometimes we know, hey, this this may not fit this quarterback as much, you know, or, or something else that, hey, and, you know, a guy like Andy, you'd say, well, shoot, he's had so much experience. We know there are certain things he's been good at against this style of defense. And some of it is you 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 just have to ask them. And really let, let a veteran quarterback tell you, you know, I haven't repped that. You know, Justin was repping that. I haven't seen it or I haven't repped it with these guys. I'm not as comfortable with that. Or can we just simplify that? Or, hey, yeah, let's do more of that. And just, just you know, Andy and Nick are guys that not only are they veteran, we, we have great re, uh, rapport with them. And, and I, think, I think they would tell you, I don't want to speak for them. I think they would tell you that they feel comfortable giving us feedback like that. So the last couple of weeks, it's been really helpful. Dan Reeder. Bill, I have two for you. The first one, just uh, with Justin, you know, Pittsburgh is two months back now and it's been sort of disrupted development since. How unsatisfying is it for you guys all collectively that the last two months have had such a, you know, bumpy pothole nature to them? Dan, maybe next week I can answer that better when I have a chance to stop and, and look at the big picture, but we're just trying to finish the season on a three game winning streak, you know, so, so I'm just kind of, you know, I think as coaches, we get we get a little tunnel visions, but so it, it, for me, I think it helps uh, spare me from that. Fair I'm enough. At the big picture. Sunday, last Sunday, you had a stretch from middle of the second quarter until the, the touchdown drive finished in the third quarter where you guys had 35 plays of the Giants too. I'm curious when you reflected back on that, what pleased you about the ability to just fully take control of the game during that stretch and, and do what you needed to do? 
Well, you know, even when, when, it, when it was 14 nothing early, it, it didn't really feel easy, right? It didn't feel like it was just clicking because we, we, we had obviously the two yard first drive and then the second drive was a short drive. But uh, am I correct in saying we had two third downs in that short drive, the second touchdown drive? I think I, if my memory serves me right. So it was hard, including a fourth down, right? So, I mean, it was hard going. Then we had some three and outs. So, um, I just think you, when we, at some point there, we felt like we got over the hump. Maybe we busted through. I think the, the throw down the sideline to Demir uh, on the flea flicker type special play, I think that helped just make it feel like we busted, we busted through a, a little bit of a barrier that we were banging into. I think they played defense really well. Um, I thought they had a good plan for us, and I thought they played hard. I thought the front played hard. But uh, I, I think you, when you feel that momentum start, and again, that, that, that drive that, that kind of got it going, I, I think uh, I, you know, it's a little harder when you're in the box than when you're down on the sideline. But even from the box, I felt some confidence from our guys, both run and pass. And I uh, was, really, was really happy that we came out in the second half and kept it going. You know, that's, I think that's a sign of a good team that, that can go through halftime and come out and keep momentum. So that, to me, that was really pleasing. Thank you. Kevin Fishbane. Hey, Bill. Uh, th this could be a big picture question, but I'll give it a try. Uh, you could rather get a chance to talk to you next week, obviously. With Justin, do you have certain takeaways from this season that you want or things you want him to take away from his rookie season? Obviously, the stat line or wins and losses are not what anybody was hoping for, but are there certain little moments of progress that you really want him to kind of hold on to as he enters the offseason? Well, I can answer, Kevin, that I, I want him to come out of this with confidence. I want, I want him to realize that he was, you know, we were behind against the Steelers in the fourth quarter and he was able to take the offense down and score. We were behind uh, against the Ravens and he was able to go down and score that he, he was on the big stage of Monday night football of, of whatever situation we were in um, and was able to perform. And so I know it sounds silly because he's done it right for his whole life, but still we're all human. You get to this point and now, okay, here, this is, my rookie year. Well, I, I want him to walk, to step away and say, yes, you know, just, just, just like they were telling me I can do this and it, th this is going to be a great story. And, um, you know, you use that confidence to kind of propel him into how it, the future goes. Two more, Pat Finley. Bill, what is it about Justin's personality that you found that is, is helped him maybe get through, especially the last two months, must have been incredibly frustrating. Well, the thing about when I think of Justin, I mean, I think he he's always to, around me, what I see, he's always himself. You know, he, he's ne I've never seen him be anything other than who he wants to be. Uh, I've never seen him uh, try to be something different for other people or for his teammates. I think he's very sincere. Um, I don't watch all the uh, press conferences and I'm, and I'm not in the locker room with him, but every interaction I see, uh, I think he's himself. And so I think, I think his, his teammates really appreciate that his coaches and I'm not saying he's perfect. None of us are. And that's why John D. Filippo spends all the time, you know, counseling them both in football and how to be a pro and all the things, but he's always himself. And, and so I think guys appreciate that. And so I think when he, when he goes through difficult times, which injuries are, can be difficult times for competitors, um, you know, he, he can, he can, uh, people realize what he's going through. And those of us who are here to, to help him and help him develop, you know, we, he, he allows himself to be coached and to be counseled and to be helped, but the guys himself all, all the time. And he, he's, I think he's true to himself when he's in this building. And I think everyone appreciates that. In your time in, uh, around other quarterbacks, have you found a correlation between guys who just try to be themselves and success or and the way people treat treat them as leaders? Is that a good sign, I guess, is what I'm asking? Well, I've seen it uh, no different than in any other. I mean, think of your workplace when you're not remote, right, which we all have been more recently. Think of the people who, who are themselves and are sincere and authentic and think of the people who... Uh, put on airs when they're around the boss or, or act differently to try to fit in with different groups. I think people see through, see through that over time. And I think, 
in the end, this guy's going to be in stressful, tough situations. And uh, if, if, if you're not being yourself, you know, you're putting up some, some false persona, it's going to crack. And then people will know that you weren't just being authentic. So I, I think it's, I think it's helpful in that when, when you're in such tight quarters and so often in stressful situations with your teammates and coaches that, um, they can trust who you are. And, and I think he's earned that. Last question, Mark Grody. Bill, Justin told us yesterday that one of the areas that he's improved in is seeing the entire field. How, how hard is that part to get down for young quarterbacks, seeing everything? Well, I think, I think when you think of – someone taught me a long time ago, uh, recall – you know, a quarterback's got a recall process and apply. You know, it's recall. When I get the play – I've got to remember not only just how to call the play in the huddle, but all the aspects, let's say it's a pass play, all the aspects of this pass play. <clears throat> Here's with the formation. And, and so I have to take a snapshot of the formation because I have to help make sure everyone's lined up correctly, which we assume they will. But, and then, okay, what's the protection on this play? Is this a protection where I have to deal with adjustments? If the defense, you know, if, if Harrison Smith is down on the line, am I going to have to adjust this protection or, or, uh, you know, all the things that go with it. Do I have to make the call or is the center going to make the call? And then, and then, okay, is this a, uh, a simple play to read or is it one where versus man, I throw it here versus zone, I throw it here. So, you know, all those things that he has to, has to think about that that's the recall of our offense and then process, right? So now you're at the, as you're walking, the huddle's breaking, you're getting to the line of scrimmage, you're taking in the defense. To me, this is a big part of probably where layers and layers are added from college because in college, sometimes, not all the time, sometimes you face certain teams that are going to play a certain uh, style of defense over and over and over in the game, you know, with the college hashes as wide as they are. A lot of colleges play field boundary, not as many NFL teams play that because the hashes are closer. So in colleges, they said, these guys always set to the field and these guys always set to the boundary. So you kind of know where everyone is. Whereas in the NFL, you got all these layers. So that's the, the, the process part of it. I'm processing what the defense is doing. I'm remembering all of the, the tendencies I studied during the week when the safeties are tilted this way. Is that a false rotation? They're actually blitzing from the other side. Or is this a team that holds their two safeties and shows late? Then application, right? So recall our offense, our stuff, process, you're taking in what the defense is. Now I got to apply it. I have to take the rules of what we're about to run and what I just told the guys in the huddle and apply it to all these things I've studied about this, about this defense during the week. And, you know, every once in a while, it's nice to give the quarterback kind of a no brainer, you know, or mm -hmm. now I'm a handoff, but even in the past game where, where, Hey, the protection's going to turn the backs are in the block. You don't have to worry about the blitz. Just, just, just throw it to a Rob or throw it to Mooney if you can, but that's not, you can't only have so many of those plays in an NFL game. You have to have all these games where you're just constantly working mentally, constantly working mentally, recall process application over and over and over. And uh, I think the coaches do it a little bit too. That's why I like to get a ride home and take a nap after the game. And I'm sure. They do too. <laughs>